Okay, what up ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here, hopefully your favorite official content creator for the first ascendant. And today, what I'm going to do is what I promised on stream yesterday. You guys asked me if I would teach you guys how to play Glay. I said, okay, I will detail it in a video and give you guys explanations along the way so you guys understand the principles behind Glay. I'm going to go through her farming build and then I'll show you a little bit of the gun build. But basically... The idea behind playing Glay is managing HP because she doesn't use MP or shields. It's all about managing HP, staying alive, doing what you need to do, and knowing when you can go all in and when you can't. Okay? That's the basic summary. Let's get into it. But before we do, don't forget, if you haven't already registered me as your content creator, make sure you do so by the link in the video description. Okay? Let's get started. Now... You should already know how to build Glaze Farming Build. Um, I have slightly updated it, like just marginally, but um, I leave it up to you whether or not you want me to post the updated version. Okay, when you're using her Farming Build, the first and most important thing that you're probably going to have to take into account is external components. For external components, I usually do not bother with any sets. You can use Slayer Set, but the value is not that high. It's better to use the Peacemaker, in fact. So normally for farming set, we'll obviously use module drop rate. Um, for the sensor, she doesn't use MP, so all this extra max MP is quite useless. I'm just going to stack the usual Annihilation sensor with the HP recovery modifier, consumable drop rate. That's most important to her. All right, you want to have that. Then for her memory, all right, defense is the key, so... I usually go with one that has a double defense roll, something like this. All right, and a gold drop rate modifier is fine. Then for your processor, you just need one that has equipment drop rate. So I would recommend, what? Well, like you can literally run any kind of processor. Um, equipment drop rate, max shield. Like there's, there's nothing, there's no modifier that suits her here other than resistance. So if you really want resistance, you can put that on. But otherwise, this is pretty much it. So here you go. Okay, so your glaze is set up that way. In this way, with her farming build, she should have roughly 21,000 hit points, give or take. Um, pretty solid defense, about 17,600. I have chosen to drop the defensive mod here um, in favor of full hit points and then just maximizing her range. Basically, I've given her Sanctification a 34.4 meter range, which is, as you can imagine, close to max, and it is ridiculous. And basically, the build is the same. If you guys want me to drop this build in a detailed explanation video, just ask and I will. Reactor actually matters here. Gold would be preferable, but gold is difficult to level up weapons with. Like, if, let's say I wanted to level up the Peacemaker, I probably wouldn't be able to get away with a uh, purple reactor because I'd have to hold it in my hands. So unless you have a reactor, gold reactor for the Peacemaker, in which case you still wouldn't be able to level up other weapons, um, it's best you just use a purple reactor. It's good enough, especially for farming. Um, I just have one that has dimension, non-attribute, and non-attribute skill bonus. If I could, I'd get non-attribute and dimension skill uh, power boost ratio on it. But this is basically it. All right. So how do you actually use the farming build? Let me demonstrate in actual combat. Okay. So we're going to go to White Knight Gulch, private mode. Here we go. Forgive the loading screens. I do enjoy editing my videos from time to time but uh, a lot of the time with like these types of proof videos i don't do the editing so that i can i guess prove in a way that everything is legit everything that you're seeing is 100 percent legit so yeah okay now i'll just go and trigger this mission for sanctification what you need to understand is that you need to be most of the time opening up in frenzy mode however when you first trigger frenzy multi-talented all right will trigger the, because your frenzy is a singular skill, it'll trigger the all attribute damage plus 30% for five seconds, which is good, but not great. Okay. So this is what uh, mainly causes the difference here. This, but your sanctification is dimension, which is cooldown. So make sure when you're going into frenzy, <laughs> you already have the multi-talented buff up. Yeah. Because otherwise, you won't get the cooldowns that you're about to see. Alright? Now, I'm holding the Peacemaker in, in my hand because the Peacemaker's unique ability also empowers her Sanctification. Alright? She can stack that real nicely and get some pretty good damage on it. Now, 
the main thing about this is to manage hit points. I want you to pay close attention to the hit points bar. All right, I'm going to trigger everything here. And then I want you to pay close attention to that bar. The crucial key to all of this is managing your hit points. That's it. It's literally all about that. As long as you manage your hit points well, you'll be all right. If you don't, then you're going to have a bad time. All right, here we go. So make sure that you always have your multi-talented cooldown up, the dimension version, of course. This will allow you to like literally cast mass sanctification with practically no cooldown. If you happen to have the peacemaker, you can also take advantage of that. All right, to gain the buff, which helps you deal a lot more damage. Thanks to the massive range on this, and like I said, if you want the updated build, I will happily post it. Um, but the massive range on this just allows you to crush, like so. Crush. And everything in 34 meters of you is going to die. Now, take note that this updated build also squeezes in HP Collector, which is really, really good. Because I can practically run around without having to switch over. Now... If you do get low on hit points, right? If you do get low on hit points, here's what you got to do. Swap back, all right? Then once you see enemies around you, summon their health, trigger your frenzy again, and then you can start firing off. As you can see, I did not need to do that. But this is how this build operates. All you want to pay attention to is your HP bar, all right? My rule of thumb is that I must be able to cast Sanctification twice without dying all right pay attention to how much is being taken away each time and i check and make sure that i always have two casts all right Bye -bye. again sorry about the coughing cold weather returns so it's been rough even though it's supposed to be spring so the weather like alternates now between like cold and hot and it's been wreaking havoc on my body but that's how it goes all right As you can see, the slightly updated variant of the uh, old build, I mean, still basically the same principles, but the slightly updated variant um, has more range, foregoes defense, especially with the uh, inversion boost, you know, uh, the one that gives you extra hit points. It may not seem like much, but it really does help. All right. It gives you a good boost overall, so I really do enjoy it quite a bit. There you go. It's just like that. Just keep murdering targets. You know, do what you need to do. Very little effort required. This is Glay. She just crushes their hearts and souls. Like so. <laughs> oh, I love it a lot. I can see that those guys are still alive, but again, we don't need to worry about them too much. They're just going to slowly bleed to death. Now, if you're at this state where you know you cannot cast, what do you do? Go back to siphoning. But again, only two targets. Cannot siphon, right? Use your guns. Alright? Heal yourself. Recover yourself. Alright, pay attention to your HP. Like I said, if I cannot cast twice, I stop siphoning. That is my usual rule of thumb. I need to know how much of my bar gets taken away each time. And once it gets close to where I cannot cast twice anymore, I stop. I stop, switch back, and then start siphoning. All right? That's the key to Glaze playstyle. If there's a lot of enemies, it's very easy to play. But if there isn't, then you suffer a lot. Okay? So there you go. Now, it's not like Glaze can regenerate hit points out there, so... Now, in this case, where I know that going into Frenzy will trigger my non-attribute thing, all right, all attribute damage, instead, I'll siphon first, then swap straight into Frenzy. Now, I've got my cooldown buff going, so I can just hit him with that. See, no longer able to siphon twice, I swap over, all right? That's it. That is literally her playstyle in a nutshell. If you cannot cast twice, swap back use her siphoning all right this is basically clay you want to get your hit points back up and then start firing off again that's all you do this is the farming play style simple nothing too complex right okay <coughs> now 
I'm back to town, and I'm going to swap over to the gun build and show you guys that. The gun build is more suitable for infiltrations. So people generally will use the gun build if they want to get descendant levels via infiltrations rather than block hyper mining or farming elsewhere outside. Um, the gun build is pretty straightforward. So gun build reactor doesn't matter. Skill cooldown duration up is all you need. Okay, annihilation set here, which has been gone through, which I've gone through in the gun build uh, video. Modules wise, I use the I use the mixed bag. I've got my focus on singular just for the cooldown. You know, all the usual stuff that I showed you in there. And HP collector or walk a tightrope is up to you. Um, I recommend choosing based on your personal preference. Okay. Oh, uh, one more thing. For the gun build, I try to make sure that the cooldown and duration of lethality is as close as possible. My cooldown is down to about 9.8 and my duration is 9.6. So I practically have unlimited ammo, right? This is the same gun build that you guys will see me utilize um, in so many situations because this is just how we do things. Okay. Let's go. Um, gun build against just anyone will do. I guess... I guess Swamp Walker is the toughest of the solo bosses, so it'll serve as a semi-decent demonstration. Anyway, the point is just... When you go in with Glade, just start blasting. That's all she does. Go in there, bang, bang, bang. Start shooting. All right, I've taken off the elemental mod temporarily for this one, just because uh, I'm too lazy to change it. But as I showed in my Greg's build, if you want to max out the damage, please, please, please use the elemental mod. Okay, for gun build, you're mostly going to be using it against Colossus, rarely infiltrations, but... Um, that's because block hyper mining with her sanctification is far faster for leveling her. Or defense missions in future. But um, here, what you do is make sure that as soon as the fight starts, just trigger your lethality and off you go. Alright, keep a close eye on your hit points. That is literally your entire duty here. If you do not keep a close eye on your hit points, you will suffer. Now, every single time you run low on lethality, you trigger it again. Why? Because with this particular version of the build, you can quite literally have unlimited ammo and unlimited mental focus. So your mental focus stays maxed out 24-7. Don't need to worry about hitting the right part or not. You're just You're just constantly blasting, see? And this will work with anything. So even with Enduring Legacy, you can literally forego the, um, you can forego the additional, uh, what you call it? You can forego the extra magazine capacity and just go in and start shooting, you know? Like, that's literally your benefit. So that's what I like about it. It's great. Now, walk tightrope is good if you want to reach maximum damage, but uh, I am currently not using it because there's no need for me to do so. And once again, you can just stack up your mental focus just by blasting constantly. You've got 9.6 seconds. The durations match. Just shoot freely. And nothing will ever go wrong. Like so. Alright. But just be careful of going too far. Going too ham. Because chances are likely that you are going to want to focus up on uh, healing yourself when you can. If you start taking too much damage, go out of frenzy. Alright. This will make it easier for you to recover. Like so. But you cannot take advantage of unlimited ammo here. So in this one, like once you get out of frenzy, you are going to have to properly manage your ammo so be aware of that but there we are okay back into frenzy here there's no need to worry about cooldowns and things like that then just start blasting as you know glaze variant of the uh of this particular weapon rex uses the mental focus instead of real life fighters so you don't have to sweat You'll get roughly the same results. Just start blasting. Just keep blasting and you'll be fine. All right. Keep blasting and the thing will die. There you go. <clears throat> and that's it. In a nutshell, that's the gun build. All you want to do is watch your hit points. Same as sanctification to an extent. What you're doing is you're just preparing. If your hit points are too low and you cannot genuinely like, um, you know, cast your lethality more or stuff like that, just take off your frenzy, heal for a minute. Now, 
I usually will take off Frenzy if I ever get down to about 33% of my hit points. That's usually my safety limit. Okay? If I if I don't get down to that, I will just keep on blasting, keep on blasting, keep on blasting. Leverage on your tankiness. Leverage on your tankiness. Abuse it. And that's basically how you play Glay. All right? This is how I do it. I hope that this helps other people uh, come to grips with their playstyle. It's all about managing hit points. Try to minimize your workload with other things. Like, don't worry too much about cooldowns, everything. If you get it set up properly, none of that will matter. Manage your hit points, and that's all it takes. Okay? Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you guys in learning how to play Glade properly. All right? Hit point management is the key. So make sure you're doing that. And if you guys want the updated farming build, let me know. I'll drop it tomorrow. Okay? Thank you, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay? Don't forget to keep supporting the channel. It is October. It's a new month. So if you want to get shout outs in my videos, all you got to do, send some love on stream. Your name will be up there just like it is every month. Thank you, guys. See you on the next one. Oh, register me as your creator. Catch you later.